Okay, Don back again, and I'm going to try this install of Fedora 23 server with Mate GUI desktop. I've got, I'm using my webcam pointed at my monitor, and it's this IBM uh, desktop machine. It's 2.8 uh, gigahertz uh, Celeron which a uh, single core which Celeron D is what it is and uh, which makes a good little server it's not too it doesn't make a lot of heat it's then it's, it's pretty quiet you can set it on quiet mode and it stays pretty quiet most of the time you can hear a little whirring once in a while when the processor starts working hard but um, I've got Fedora 21 on it I'm watching my I'm controlling this laptop that's webcam recording you can't do a, I don't have, even if I did it in VirtualBox, I don't have a machine powerful enough to do a mock-up install on, and run VirtualBox at the same time. So I'm trying with uh, I'm controlling this laptop with remote desktop. It's a Win 7 system and uh, has a built-in webcam and has a fairly decent uh, resolution. More, much more than these uh, webcams up here, they're really old. So I don't, can't use them. I know you can't read it, so I'll just have to tell what's going on. That's the best I could get. If I set the, I've set the uh, laptop behind me, then you see the back of my head. I set it off to the right. Oh, now my stream looks like it's coming in. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure my stream was working before I, uh, you know, considered myself as live and going. So it's beginning to work. And I'm not going to sit here and watch it because then it will. Uh, if I can get out of here. And for some crazy reason, when I'm making a stream, I don't know if it's because I'm making a stream and watching it or what. I've done that before with no problems, but my web browser keeps... See, I'm jumping back and forth and not kind of explaining, but this is on my, my main machine that I use all the time. It's not much. It's a 1.8 gigahertz Core 2 with 3 gig of RAM. It's running Fedora Linux, and uh, it's actually running Fedora 14. It's got all my favorite apps on it, and uh, I still use it a lot. Then for you know your server, you don't want anything that old to get broke into in about four hours. So, uh, but it's behind two firewalls. This system here, so it should be okay. I need to upgrade it to. I need a whole new system. But anyway, here I am trying to. I was going to get off of this page, and I think I'm already. Yeah, I don't know why, but as soon as as soon as my stream, it was fine until my stream started, and my. Uh, now my Firefox is using 32 percent of my of my processor, and so is Plugin Contain, which is a plugin that's getting used for some reason uh, to run that. So I've just been ending up having to uh, end the process to get it because it doesn't catch up, and I don't want uh, everything messed up here in my recording. This time I'm doing a local recording and a stream at the same time because I know the audio and video is not going to match it, it, I've never been able to get one to work I've used uh, let's see let me get over here I think all you're going to get is video feedback when I point the camera at this but let's see what happens um, I can't remember the name of my apps okay right now I'm using OBS Studio Open Broadcasting Studio I just discovered it I love open source. I have a, I started I discovered Linux in 2005. I discovered open source website software before that back in my Windows 98 days. But I was running XP in 05 still when or that was the main OS then for Windows. Uh when I discovered Linux and I started out with a uh distro called Blag Linux. It had everything in the kitchen sink and it was, I really liked it and I never went back. And Then I moved on to Fedora, just playing Fedora, learned how to build my own systems. And uh, I had played with servers a little back in Windows 98 but I was on dial-up. You couldn't run a server on dial-up. So anyway, after a few years and I got a high speed in uh, I ended up, uh, I've run a server since, I don't know, at least my, my home, I put my websites on bishopco.com and donsongs.com and uh, psalm68.org. All of them are running on my server since, I don't know, 6, 06 or something, 05, 07, I don't remember now. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, XSplit was the last one I used. I, that's the only one I really, I liked it pretty well, but it's 
limited you they only limit you to, it's they want you to you know it's free it's typical windows free shareware type stuff you know you get certain features for free and then you have to pay to get the rest that's a big difference between open source and freeware and stuff like that uh the one back at the beginning there of the youtube live streaming last year or so ago two years ago whenever they started it where's that other one uh yeah I to put my favorite my favorite apps icons on the desk I don't care. I'll look it that way. I like to wait to get. I can't find them. Even with the search, Windows Searcher is not very good. It's not near as good as a desktop searcher is on uh, Linux. You have to kind of know the name of the app, or you, you won't find it. And I, usually, I, and in Linux, I can just search for the purpose or the type of app it is, and I'll end up finding it. So, uh, what is the name of that? Is it with a W? Split. That's a pretty good one, but limited features. Uh, OBS is what I'm using. Tight VNC is what I'm using to stream my desktop over to my Linux box. How you're seeing this right now. Whatever it is you're seeing. It's not much, I'm sure. Um, it's on the desktop. Wirecast. Right there. Wirecast. I never was able... It was hard to set up for me. I never was able to get it working. That was the one that YouTube originally uh, recommended, and in some support, as uh, some help streams, uh, the forums, some people mentioned XSplit, and that's when I got onto that. But my big problem was uh, I had to go all the way down to the pretty much the low resolution to even get the voice to stay synced with the video for 20, 30 minutes. Uh, OBS Studio really doesn't seem like the it's it'll do the higher quality stream you know for your webcam or your uh, desktop remote desktop but it uh, I'll just flip over to desktop for a minute and show you it'll do a higher quality stream and you can see it pretty good but um, that's OBS studio there that's XSplit that's our icons of course and Wirecast um, Uh, best I think I've seen is 10-15 minutes of the audio being synced with the video. So I'm going to do... I'm running uh, a stream up to right now and a local recording. Just I'm going to see what happens. I hope it doesn't overtax the machine and make it get even worse. But I thought, well, you know, since I know the live stream is probably not going to be too great uh, audio and video sync-wise, then... Uh, I do a backup recording, and uh, if I go too long, I'll fill up the hard drive, and then I'll be in another trouble. But uh, I've got about eight gig on this. I looked at it a while ago, so I'm going to leave it like this. And then what am I going to do? Okay, so I have to. Oh, I need to put it back on cam, or I won't be getting. Make sure the whole point of now. I have a KVM switch. Uh, I was thinking I might shut down my remote desktop app so that yeah shut down my remote desktop apps I won't be using so much uh, that's a lot of network uh, it's local network but it's a network as network you know so using up my bandwidth for my streaming so okay do not exit this app do exit remote desktop okay where's the there it is okay go back to get it out of uh, um, <clears throat> full screen and uh, yeah we'll do that now everything seems to be working I'd have to go it's not too hard to log I can do it pretty quick if I need to so close my stream okay and then I'll go on over close that stream that'll be good I'll leave the app running just, just like that for now I'm gonna go over here My switch is back up under the monitor, and I can't reach it with my fingers. I have to use my uh, pencil. Okay, now, since I'm using DVI input from that desktop, but BGA from the uh, rest of them, it's a four-port switch with USB, which is cool. Then I have to manually, on the monitor, switch over to VGA. <coughs> now, I've got this booted up to... 
Yeah, I, I'm, I have to turn. I can turn my head and look at the laptop screen. It's over there beside me. Make sure everything. I can see my audio too over there. Okay, I'm pointing talking just to myself, right? Uh, maybe talking to myself anyway. Maybe I'm the only one that ever watched this. Okay, so I've got it ha halted there at the boot screen. Normally, what it'll do, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it'll start automatically start on test this media, and then after the test is done, as long as it passes, it'll go on and automatically start the installation, uh, boot up to the installation uh, system. It used to be called Anaconda, but I think they call it something else now. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to put press enter on that. It's a USB stick. I have it put on a USB stick. I'm not going to go into how that's done. Uh, other than I will say that uh, if you're running a Linux system, uh, you can do it by using uh, using the uh, the uh, Fedora the app. What's the name of that app? I can't think of it, but Fedora installs it by default. It's a it's a partitioning and uh, uh, app. Uh, and what you can do is use uh, the restore restore. What you do is you say restore. Go in there to the Different to the uh, I don't even, I can't explain it without looking at it. Anyway, you're gonna you use the restore function and restore the ISO that you downloaded to that stick. Now it'll erase everything on that stick. It also limits the stick to whatever size that ISO is. You can't put anything else on there, but that's fine. And you can just reformat it later. This is booting up. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see the little line. That, now you can, there's a little more text coming up, but. Uh, it, it'll take a little while to boot up, but not too long. And I don't know if I—I I guess I already did that. I always hit escape uh, during the boot up. Well, no, I think I'm going to have to do it here in a minute. To uh, otherwise, all you see—oh, it's almost done. Otherwise, all you see is a little line going across, you know, a progress line. And I like to see the commands and see if there's, you know, if there's errors or anything, then you can read them. And it basically, it puts you into a, a command line or a terminal window, if you want to say that. Now it's a little. This machine is not very all that pop powerful, and all of Instora, Instora, Fedora installers are really kind of slow working. It seems like to me. Uh, but anyway, you kind of wait. See, like I, I put my mouse over continue. It, it selects what I want: English uh, language and English uh, United States. Uh, English language, English United States. I don't want United Kingdom because I'm. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm from Texas, uh, and I don't, that's the kind of language I do is U.S. English. Okay, so, Texas style. So, when it gets to where uh, it will do anything when you click, then you can click continue. And you don't want to click over and over and over again if it doesn't seem to respond. It will, uh, it'll just mess things up. So, you wait a little bit. If nothing happens, then you may have to, it wasn't ready. Usually, the my icon turns out a little finger and you know it's ready but I don't know if it does that in this installer or not I guess I'm throwing my yeah throwing my my nose is bugging me sinuses getting my paper towel up in front of the camera there okay so it takes a while to uh, the, the installation source it'll get that automatically it'll get your low, low closest mirror can't do your software until that's done you need to you need to pick your disk that you want to use. I have two in here: the one that's running that, that I run Fedora 21 on, and then the disk that I'm reformatting, a different one, hard drive. I mean, uh, disk, hard drive. Now with so many different types, it kind of gets confusing when you just say disk. So first thing I always do when the network's set up, you don't have to change anything in here, but I want my machine to have a name, not just a uh, local host. So it says local host, local domain by default, which is fine. But I'm going to name this one Bishop Co. because my website name is bishopco.com. Let me make sure. It's so tiny I can't see it. <coughs> so then you go up here, and that's what's odd is because you know most uh, most applications, your controls are down at the bottom, right side, or in the middle, or somewhere. But this is up here at the top. Say done. Click on done. Here go back keep checking my little video okay and it still hasn't uh, finished getting your sources yet 
So I go to, I just, then you can do it either way. You can do the disc first if you wanted, but that's just what I've started. I've done this, this is about the sixth or seventh time I've done it on this system because I'm not ending up with my GUI like I want. Keep forgetting the trick. Had it all down with the old uh, Anaconda installer, and now it's, uh, the tricks are different. And the way things work are different. If you don't do it right, it just, you, you, you might not get anything at all. You'll get a broke install. I've gotten several of those the first time I did, tw ever since Fedora 21. But anyway, I keep forgetting my tricks, my own tips and tricks that I figured out. Okay, I clicked on that disk. That's the one that I don't want to change because it's got my Fedora 21. I can always boot back into there and my server's back up. I have it running on a different machine right now. I have an old Pentium 4, my very first machine I built. Uh, running Fedora 22 right now and I have uh, a server running on it. I have basically a duplicate of my server running on it and I can just you know use the router to switch over to it and that's what I got going right now so that I'm not offline. I want to make additional space because I'm going to erase the whole hardware. Now this is something that works good that used to didn't work at all. I used to have to always pre uh, if you had anything any uh, Linux systems on your on your uh, hard drive it would usually cause trouble and hang up almost always all the way from 05 to, to from, I mean from Fedora what was it 5 no 6 yeah 5 to Fedora 2019 it would always do that uh, to me and a lot, I've seen other people have that problem I've seen online and a couple of them I wrote back you know on a forum or whatever and said hey try this and they tried and said yeah it worked you know so I would uh, what it, what I did was I would get use party magic uh, G parted the graphic version of part, uh, parted, and I, I'm not parted magic. That's a boot CD. I would use G parted. Well, you can either way, either parted magic uh, and get G, get, and open up G parted, or if your machine's in a running Linux system, then use G parted. And uh, if your hard drive is in a running Linux system, or if you can put it in one, use G parted and just make it empty. And if you have Windows on there, be careful not to delete that stuff. And uh, uh, make it empty and then it would work just fine. But then you don't have to do that with the new installer. Somewhere I wonder if it tells you the name of the installer. I've read it I don't know how many times. Well, anyway, so uh, I, if you just click what you do in the new installer here. Click on the disk you want. If you click on both of them, it will still it'll ask you if you want to erase the uh, you know the second one or not. And of course you wouldn't. You might not. You may or may not want to. Depends on what you're trying to do. But uh, I actually did install it once and click on both, and you know, I didn't lose anything. I made sure to pay attention. To what's going on most of it you can do just by reading the screen but there's a lot left out and it you know that's not intuitive so automatically configure leave it that way you really got to get get some Linux knowledge to do manual configuration or hard drive partitioning knowledge is what it is really whether you do it in Windows or Linux okay uh, I want to make space available that's what you click okay leave it like that I'm not going to encrypt it uh, just get into more stuff I have to remember. Might be a good idea these days with all the all the trouble online, you know, people getting into your systems. But and you see, I've already clicked on the done, but it ain't done in nothing yet. So <clears throat> we'll wait and see if it took or not. Uh, that's what I was talking about. Everything being kind of slow. So it tells you down here. I don't. I kind of think it didn't take. I got my drinks over there to the right. I usually don't have anything over there to the right, but my drinks and other stuff like that. Down there on the right, it says one disk selected, 74.56 gigabyte. It's an 80 80 gig hard drive. 1.47 megabytes free. Okay, so I don't think it took. Yeah, and I never see that hand coming up like it does normally in in your regular operating systems. So I'm gonna click it again. I'm afraid I'm gonna get it out of whack. Is what's gonna happen? Uh, <clears throat> things are slow to react during in this install. It's, it seems kind of odd that such a simple looking interface would use that much resources, but it does. Um, just have to wait on it. And uh, what in the world? Oh crap! Oh, uh, my daggum Windows system is trying to restart. I don't even see. I'm trying to use the. Uh, uh, dang it! I hate Windows. I hate Windows. I hate Windows. I hate Windows. 
it did some kind of updates automatically.